Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So, I am ready to craft me some pants. I've got a lot of stuff on me, though, so I just want to make sure I've dropped everything that I can. We got some fish in the last episode, and the most important thing... I'm going to go ahead and put them in nature's freezer for now, because we are... We're good. We're good on food. I'm not concerned about cooking the fish right now, so we are just going to put them outside in the snow and let them sit. This is me looking around for a wolf to make sure I'm not... <laughs> in imminent danger. But, uh, didn't I have one more fish? Yes, there it is. Sorry. I don't know why I couldn't see it, but I couldn't see it. Step up here. Back inside. And I would like to make me some pants. Unfortunately, we have one hour of daylight left. Didn't see that. So, um... Tell you what. Let's chow down on some food. And we'll do this at the beginning of a brand new day. How about that? All right, so we're no longer hungry. We're actually not even that tired, which sucks. What's this right now? Oh, that... It looked like something in the light, but it's actually not. It's just... It, it looked like some matches were sitting there, but... That's just the edge of the, uh... Of the counter. Alright, so... Now, these are sitting here, like, in the middle of nowhere, not organized at all. I don't like that. There's that. Let's go ahead and do the same with these. A bit more method to the madness. All right. Oh, nice. We can put them under the bed. Heck yes. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, so there's that. Oh, yeah, and I've got that wolf pelt. I knew there was something else. I remember watching an episode recently, you know, like Skin to Wolf, and I was like, there's something that I'm forgetting. <laughs> And I saw that. Now, we also got that green maple sapling. All right, so that's curing. It's going to take a while. I think that's actually been on me for an episode or two, which is hilarious. But this is how scatterbrained you get when you're uh, teaching and playing at the same time. There's a cured rabbit pelt. Not bad. We need more rabbit pelts in order to make the, the rabbit skin mitts. You know, I received a comment on the last episode of this series. People saying, well, you should you should make all the craftable items. I actually am not... For reasons that I think are very evident, if you've watched the series up to this point, I'm not going to make every craftable item. And I think I've said that before, um, because I just feel like uh, I'm trying to show you how to play the game, like how to do the basics. Um, I'm not trying to show you how to do everything to where there's nothing you see on your own. I actually want to give players the opportunity uh, to watch this series. And as much as, you know, watching a Let's Play, you might want to see me make all the items. And I definitely have done that and will do that in other Let's Plays. Uh, this one, I think, is a little bit different. So I'm, I'm going to hold off from, from that approach. Let's go ahead and sleep for nine hours. We are definitely going to wake up before that's up, though. Right about now. All right, there's that. Woke up fully rested, but that's good because we're nice and thirsty, and now... All right, we're not quite unburdened. We're still carrying plenty of sticks, and the, the water is still pretty heavy. Credit where credit is due. Three hours darkness left. We are fully rested. Let's pass the time for two of those hours. We don't have any books to read. Otherwise, I might spend my time doing that. All right. And now, tell you what. Let's let's set sleep up for two hours. Okay. Sorry, I had to make a note of something. So, um, let's go ahead and drink a little bit. And that's just going to put us barely up. Sweet, we're actually below burden now. And we're also a little bit hungry, which means I could... I mean, I have a pound of cattails on me, so if I want to loosen my burden up a little bit, I could eat these. I could also eat these candy bars, because they're taking up... I've got a half pound thanks to two candy bars on me right now. So that needs to be resolved as well. Okay, 
we have pants to make. So let's pick. No wait, no, I didn't need the wolf hide. Damn. Drop any of this gear. Put that down. Let's put this in line with the others, so that the more OCD of the viewer base doesn't lose their mind, which I completely understand. Um. Yeah, we've got these Something's cured gear go. hides, and we also need some. Might need four guts. I think it's just three, but I'm going to have four just in case. Let's come over here. Workbench is going to take a second to load up, but that's fine. And in a second, we're going to have our boots and pants. And boots and pants and boots and pants. It's going to be great. All right, so yeah, we've already got our boots. We've already made those. It's going to take 12 hours to make these. Dear God. Um, let's go ahead and work on these for... Eight. We're going to get nice and thirsty. Actually, no hunger is more of a threat than thirst right now, which is bad. Right, we're going to lose some condition. Not a lot. Now we have four and a half hours left and five hours of daylight left. Oh, that's actually not bad. I can finish this. I can finish this. I wasn't expecting that at all. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to step outside, get some more meat, chow down. Notice how quickly we've gone through the deer already. Imagine playing on higher difficulty levels where these resources were harder to come by. This wolf, and especially where you can't eat the wolf meat as reliably. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Got to be careful. Alright, I might be able to finish these in one day. That would be hilarious if I could do that. Very rare that you finish a uh, main body clothing item in one day. Oh, that's the flare that I dropped. It's like, what's that red thing? Okay, so how about begin crafting? Please work. Please work. This would be amazing if I did this I close my eyes. in one day. There goes the daylight. Nice! There's still daylight left, too. We can still see in here. And we're really tired. But first things first. Let's go ahead and drink from this water. We're going to need more water soon, but that's fine. We've got plenty of wood on us and near us, in fact. The, the wood we have on us is uh, um, just sticks. But anyway, let's take a look at those pants, shall we? Now we can put them on outside of the jeans that we're already wearing. We don't have to take anything off, which is crazy. We can just put these on. They're four and a half pounds, so it's extra clothing. I think actually what I would rather do is take these jeans off. Um, well, hmm. see, it's tempting just to put everything on together. Let's put everything on together and see how that goes. But this gives us a nice 3.6 bonus to both temperature bonus and wind chill bonus. So now we have deerskin boots and pants, and it's awesome. We need to sleep because we're super tired from spending an entire day crafting pants and succeeding. But then maybe we can do a little bit more fishing, huh? Also, I'm going to wake up thirsty and probably not enough water to quench my thirst. Wow. Just slept through the whole damn night. If this is enough to quench my thirst, I'm going to be shocked. There you go. So, an, a completely empty thirst meter is roughly 0.17 gallons of water. Just bear that in mind. Just so you know. You've seen me do this three times already in, the, in this episode. I'm just going to do the same thing again. Now, this is actually a slightly lighter deer steak, 700, 722. Actually, yeah, I'm going to drop this and hold off. So we're not going to eat as much this time. We're not encumbered. It's because we're not carrying a lot of water. That's why we're not encumbered. Although, right now, there's an argument for not really needing the gun. And the gun is heavy, by the way. Carrying the rifle around, 8.8 .8 pounds. So I'm going to I'm gonna just get by for a bit, but let's be conscious of the fact that we're carrying that, right? Weight management, especially on higher difficulty levels, is really, really... Yes, I know I have a sapling to put down. I'll get to that in a second. Weight, man weight management is really 
All right, we used all the cured guts that, uh, that we needed. Right, those have been cured. Let's, let's drop this down. Weight management is, is very important. You need, to, you need to stay on it. All right, let me pick up these saplings real quick so I can, sure so I can, I can show you more. what you can do with all these. The survival bow. I can I can make a brand new bow. I can make arrow shafts with the birch saplings, which three arrow shafts per sapling. It's pretty nice. And then the simple arrows, which require arrowheads. How you make arrowheads? You actually have to go to a forge and you have to make them. You can find arrowheads in the world as well. If you break, if you find a broken arrow, you can harvest that and get an arrowhead. Um, I think there may even be a few spots where you can literally find arrowheads on the ground, but it's it's been very rare. I really feel like I've seen it at some point, but um, yeah, you mostly have to forge them. I'm going to go ahead and put all those saplings back down because we're not actually going to make any of those things. Don't really need to, truth be told. And I'm also going to go ahead and drop this. I'm going to go upstairs and put this scrap metal away. Where was I going? Oh yeah, here we go. already have some scrap metal in here. And actually, let me go ahead and get some cardboard matches out. Scrap metal away. Okay, 12 hours daylight left. Notice it feels like 18 degrees at the moment. It's actually minus 9 with a minus 2 wind chill. We're protected from the wind, so the wind chill's not affecting us right now. But this is the benefit of, of having these amazing clothing items. You can go out during much more challenging conditions and still be okay. One thing I want to... Um, I want to clarify from the last episode because I was describing to people that you can, in fact, use a deer or use a wolf. Uh, you can lure a wolf towards you and then sick it on a deer. That's actually back to front of what would probably be the most successful and most often used strategy, uh, which, as some commenters pointed out, rightly pointed out, uh, you would actually you would scare the wolf. Or I'm sorry, you would scare the deer toward the wolf. So the idea is you see a wolf. There's a deer nearby, you want the deer dead because you want the meat, you want the hide, you want the guts. So you scare the wolf, you scare, you scare the deer towards the wolf, and then maybe you kill the wolf, maybe you scare the deer off uh, with a flare. But um, either way, you've got two kills, you've only used one round at most, and uh, assuming you were a good shot, and then you get all of the rewards of those two corpses. Of course, the longer you leave the wolf to feast on the deer, the more he's going to eat. But usually they don't eat that much meat that quickly. You still get most of the corpse almost immediately. So in case you're wondering, well, what if the wolf starts eating it? There's your answer. You can you can kill the wolf after he started eating, even after he's been eating for a while, and you'll still find a good amount of meat. If you're a min-maxer, though, you're going to want to kill that wolf as soon as possible. If you're wondering where I'm going, the answer is I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to the um, the area outside of the Carter Hydro Dam. We're not going to go into the Hydro Dam yet, but it's worth showing you where it is in relation to the rest of the zone. At this point, it's just, it's not so much about, it's really not so much about showing you where it is. It's just about going to the different places in Mystery Lake. I'm not trying to like show you, hey, here's how you get to Carter Hydro Dam, but um, watching this tutorial, I think for a lot of people, especially if you do start at Mystery Lake as a way of learning the game fresh, I think it's good to just have a general sense of where things are in relation to one another, so I want to go over to Carter Hydro, just for funsies. It's warming up too, by the way. Notice it feels like 18 degrees now. It's still below freezing. Like, we're... <laughs> Temperature's still red. 
but we're in good shape overall. Got one freaking bullet. Another thing that uh, has been talked about in the comments over the past couple of days uh, is the concept, the presence of secret stashes of what are called prepper caches in the game world. I have deliberately avoided even talking about these in the tutorial. I would never have talked about it in the first 10 episodes because I imagine only people who don't mind being spoiled as much um, are watching to this point. Um, prepper caches are one of the coolest things about uh, the Lawn Dark. They randomly spawn in different locations every game. There's no way for me to know exactly where the one that's in Mystery Lake right now is because it starts in a different spot every time. Uh, I actually am of the opinion that if the developers were willing to do the work uh, on the environmental graphics and such, um, the forges should be the same way uh, so that um, that gameplay requirement, the ability to, you know, make your items, you would have to find it every single game. You would have to find the forge uh, before you got going. Now, there's definitely some discussion to be had there. Oh, this... Interesting. We haven't harvested this corpse yet. This guy has a little bit of extra meat on him. I could use a hatchet and be done in 13 minutes. Let's do it. Just a little bit of an extra snack for the road. Not bad. Too heavy. Oh, chill out. You'll be okay. Let's cook this real quick. But yeah, um, prepper caches can contain clothing. They can contain medicine. They can contain um, tools. They can contain food. It, the, where the prepper cache spawns... That didn't work. Damn. Where the prepper cache spawns determines the awesomeness of what is inside. And there are some hatches, some prepper caches in the world that actually don't give you very much and they don't spawn in random locations every time one of those exists in one of the in one of the game's other zones called pleasant valley it's my favorite zone in the game like you have no idea i re i love pleasant valley it work? is it's beautiful the weather is amazing uh it is definitely one of the most comfortable places to be in the entire game um if you think you're comfortable in mystery lake Mark my words, you need to go to Pleasant Valley. You will be so much happier there as a Lone Dark player, bar none. There's just no question. And it's in Pleasant Valley, that this, this useless... And the reason it's useless is that Pleasant Valley is so bountiful and such a wonderful place that there's no need whatsoever for you to have a hatch that would help you because you don't need help right. in Pleasant Valley. Who, who needs help in, in Pleasant Valley? No one. <laughs> okay. I didn't have the heart to be like fully sarcastic there to where you couldn't tell that I was that I was in fact being sarcastic, so don't go to Pleasant Valley. It's terrible. <laughs> I, I was tempted. I really was. It would have been fun. But I would have caught so much flack from people who like were so looking forward to going to Pleasant Valley. Because of what I said. <laughs> and then they actually went. They're like, Hadrian lied to me. <laughs> okay, so now we've got some food on us. It's not raw anymore. Actually, this fire is still going to be going for a bit. I can use some water. Let's go ahead and fix that problem as well. Never be afraid to start an impromptu fire to meet your needs really quickly like this. Even if it's just to get some water. That's what you're most likely going to be starting an impromptu fire for, but I, I started this one just because of the the deer being here. There's that. It's no longer frozen at all, so I could actually harvest this with a hunting knife. Let's do that. Let's get the hide in the guts. Why not? Feels like 38 degrees now. See, now the fire's out, and we're not even... <sighs> We're totally fine. All right, so let's head down this direction. Because I'm not going to walk you straight up to Carter Hydro Dam. I'm not, again, this is not meant to be an A to B to C tutorial. Like, here's location A, here's location B, here's location C, here are the lines that connect them. So 
I'm going to take random routes just to preserve a little bit of the exploration gameplay for you. In case you are watching this and you're not as familiar with the Lone Dark, you haven't played it as long, so. Also, cattails. <laughs> There's a method to my madness. Most of the time. So many cattails out here. Oh wait, there's another one right there, right in front of me. I almost walked away from it. Too much stuff to carry. But I didn't. Oh, chill out, Mark Mir. You're gonna be okay. People say that Jennifer Hale bitches more than Mark Mir in this game. I gotta say, I, I, I'm feeling some sexism, which is hilarious because the first person that said that to me was Willowist, and I very much doubt that she would be sexist against her own gender. <laughs> <laughs> but like I have to say it like it, it it seems like like people are just hating on Jennifer Hale because she's got a woman's voice it's like that both of these player characters in sandbox bitch a lot <laughs> I can't I can't exonerate uh, Mark Mir as much as people led me to believe that I would be able to no sirs no ma'ams no ladies? What's the female equivalent of saying no sir? No ma'am? But then there's no... Ma'ams is not... It doesn't work. Sirs does. Ma'ams doesn't. See? More sexism. Inequality. It's terrible. Man, I'm a smartass tonight. I don't... I don't... I don't know what's happening. Alright, let's... Let's get a few more of these cattails while keeping an eye out for our friendly neighborhood wolf, which patrols these areas. I'm not seeing just yet. There's the dam up there. Well, you, you can't actually see it right now, but we're very near Carta Hydro Dam. I have an inexplicable fascination with cattails. Well, it's only in, only inexplicable on Voyager difficulty, because they're not necessary. We have all this meat, there's no reason to be harvesting all these cattails. But once you play, seriously, once you play on interloper difficulty, and you are used to the stress of not being able to find any food, you will develop a compulsion, just like I have. When you see a cattail, you will want it. You won't be able to explain it. You'll start eat, you'll start, you will start, words, can't talk, you will start eating them in real life. You'll see a cat and be like, oh, gotta eat it, gotta have it. Gotta have it in my backpack. Your friends will look at you like, what the hell are you on? And you'll basically just have to be like, don't ask questions. Just, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. I need this cattail. <laughs> I need this. I need this thing. All right, let's head back because I do fully believe that there's a wolf somewhere nearby that is going to attack me if I'm not careful. Because a wolf likes to patrol this area. So in case you're wondering where Carter Hydro is exactly, it's right there. And it's gone. <laughs> We're going to head back this direction. Um, I think in the next episode, I might review some of the comments and talk a little bit more about fishing. At this point, I gotta be honest, um, I feel like I have given you a nice introduction to basic concepts. A lot of the things that came up in comments are more intermediate concepts, which I could cover. Uh, and in the last episode, I do definitely want to go to Carter Hydro Dam. Um, I want to be very thorough in this and very deliberate and even very slow in ending this series but at the same time i'm not going to let it drag on forever and ever uh, we're already backtracking a good bit because i'm deliberately trying to avoid um transition zones i'm trying to avoid you know going to the dam until the end of the series so yeah see this is what's amazing it feels like 42 degrees right now this is what i was talking about a few episodes back once you have this clothing you get to this place where you don't have to worry as much 
And many days, when the weather's good, which it always is in Pleasant Valley, by the way, many days when the weather's good, you don't even have to worry about um, that top meter. It's just, it's not even a concern. So that is the goal in having some of the best clothing items in the game. Which again, when you're playing on lower difficulties, the best findable, the best scavengeable clothing items, they're rare, but you, if you find them, they're better than the best craftable items. I know this because I, once you have played on Stalker and Interloper, and you go back to playing this, dif this difficulty level, when you run around, you are scavenging as if your life depends on it, when in fact, at this difficulty level, it doesn't. So you find everything. There's a little bit of luck, but for the most part, you just find everything. So I found, like, the, the best footwear, the best pants, the best coat, scavengeable. They exist. It's interesting. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one here, and we'll keep... I'm going to keep the comment threads open to your feedback in general this week, because um, I am recording day-to-day -day a little bit, at least with this series, and I think it's working well because it gives me a chance to talk to you guys uh, each time. If you're watching this in the backlog, of course, it doesn't matter. But if you're watching in the backlog, I still want to reiterate that I am open to suggestions. I am happy to add on half episodes to this series, even maybe full episodes, if someone makes a really good point and says, hey, you didn't cover this in the tutorial, but I would like you to talk about this. I, I would be glad to uh, to hear and, uh, and maybe even address that feedback. So again, feel free to do that. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New survival, science fiction, and or simulation content airs every single day at 6 p.m. on my channel. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.